Welcome to all of you, especially the people here in Ada, live at this lovely webinar with lovely guests like Machtelt Huber. She's the initiate, initiate, initiate. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a good start. <laughs> that's a good the former director of the Institute of Positive Health. And together with All is Health, we have this webinar. Machtet will tell us a little bit more about how we come together here, here as well as in the Zoom. So people, welcome this morning. You can put on your camera, which is nice for us, so we can see you all because we have this um, uh, monitor in front of us. So instead of black and white names, we see people coming up, which makes it more like we're all together. We have Peter Benemir. He was the former director of uh, hospital Bernhoven, which was quite famous in the Netherlands because of the way he used his network. Then we have Dan Bultje. He is director of Healthy Aging Network Northern Netherlands. And that's the oldest network of all his health. And in the middle, our main guest, all the way down from Colombia and Canada, it's Alex Yedat. And he wrote the book, Trusted Networks. And for a lot of people who are in the Zoom here or live here in Ada, from the Health Transformation School, it's already standard base work. So we deepen in and we deepen out. So after this one and a half hour, everybody is inspired, everybody is full of knowledge, and everybody is willing to act. Because yesterday, he told us there should be a health pandemic, and tomorrow he will come in on the uh, lovely event you organized, Machtelt, for Institute of Positive Health with extra information, but today we deepen in trust. So welcome to all of you. Machtelt, it's not for such a reason that we are together here today at the 10th of November in Ede. A few words. Yeah. A few words. Um, <coughs> yeah, Alex and I know each other from, well, 12 years ago, 13 years ago, maybe. I wanted to transform the uh, definition of health, uh, of the World Health Organization, and, and heard that somebody else in Canada was willing to do the same. So we got into contact, and since, it's, <laughs> since then it's a very intense, we don't see each other very much, but it's a very intense relationship. And I met you two years ago after a silence of 10 years, and I told you that I had further elaborated the new concept of health to positive health, and you showed me the trusted networks. And I thought, my goodness, this is complimentary. This is really wonderful. So I'll show you, this is the, what happened. We had this new definition of health or concept of health uh, as the ability to adapt and self-manage in the face of social, physical, and emotional challenges. And that worked out two ways. And what I recognized is that these two views were fully complementary. Positive health is about the individual and your own meaningfulness and you were working on the society, the community with trust as the really the basic concept and I thought we must bring this together. So one year ago at the All Is Health conference I told about that and that rose, arose an enormous reaction. People said yeah we want to know more about that. So we formed a little group, the Trusted Networks group and we decided we want to, to really bring something of this to the Netherlands but not just from Canada and Colombia, we have people in the Netherlands as well who have worked with it. And we decided to choose first two people, Peter, Ben Amir and Dan Bultje, really to discuss and work with them, interview them about the concept of trust. And then we interviewed Alex in Colombia with long Zoom sessions, very <laughs> inspiring. <laughs> and the intention is to now discuss it, but the group will further work it out, the interviews, and really write some essays about it. And we'll see where it gets. Thank you. <laughs> we'll see where it gets. It's trust. It's networks, and the combination is trusted networks. Um, networks, I think, for each and every one of us, we are used to work in networks. We are used to work in cooperation with one another. But trust is the base, the basic in which we explore ourselves in a personal way, but also in how we work together. So I think 
Today will be very, very, very special because there will also be personal stories. But let me first ask Peter Benemir, why did you say yes when Machtelt asked you to come over here today to Ede? And he also brought a book with him. It's a book, De Ingreep. I don't think Alex already has uh, uh, read it because it's in Dutch. It was translated. Oh, my goodness. That's really nice. Why did you say yes? Um, well, a few reasons. The, the first thing is, I think it's quite rare uh, when Machtel 10 years ago made this movement that it's still there mm -hmm. and that it's based on trust. And, and secondly, uh, the movement we did within Bernhoven um, is also fundamentally um, um, driving on the, the, the concept of trust. And um, if you look to the world today, I think that's something we lack on desperately for the moment. So for me, it was a no-brainer to have a little bit of the opportunity to share a few of the things we have learned over the last years with, uh, with the audience of today. Same question for you, Dan. So it's because you're old or it's the oldest network? Yes. Well, uh, uh, well I had the, uh, the fun experience of uh, Machtelt sitting at our uh, uh, kitchen table to have an interview about this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this topic. And uh, the funny thing is that we uh, also started to talk about theory of working together and theory of health. And we, uh, I, I had to tell her that I actually never read any books about <laughs> stuff like this. I, I, did, I didn't read your book, to, to be very honest. But I'm very sorry that so if I can still stay there. There's that's, also that's a fine. natural learning <laughs> yes, process. Yes, so. yes. <laughs> but, but Some people have that. But from a more <laughs> like like intuitive way of working, I came across the same ideas, and also uh, I, I uh, it was a long talk that we had, and then I thought, and it kept with me after the meeting. So it kept I kept thinking about how trust influences how we work, and I uh, came across more instances where I when I thought about it, and I thought, well, yeah, that that was a good ex example of how it how it works, and we will elaborate on it uh, later on. Uh, so that's why I thought, well, this is a great opportunity to even further the discussion and, and well, maybe also to share some ideas about uh, well, what I see in the region on a local level as well. Yeah. yeah. And do you, do you see the same as Peter uh, told us already a few minutes ago, that there is a lack of trust? Uh, yes. Well, uh, <laughs> if, you find, uh, if you look for it, you will find it. But um, uh, when you look at society as a whole at the moment, we have a big problem. Um, so uh, uh, I work in, uh, also in, in, in certain areas in, in Leeuwarden, for instance, mm -hmm. where people aren't the richest folks. And uh, when it comes to trusting the government uh, and the corona, uh, uh, the, the C word, uh, yeah, the, the, so, so how we deal with it. And they really say we rather die than that we get the vaccine mm. uh, because we don't trust where the vaccine is coming from. So, so when you talk about trust, that's not only about do we trust the process of the vaccine, it's do we trust the government and do we trust the system that's, that's formed around it. So, so I'm, really, um, uh, well, I'm really worried about some uh, uh, discussions in, in society at the moment. So it could okay. be better. Thank yeah. you for this start. Alex, yeah, that, you're here. You're our main guest. You brought in your book. Um, the first question is about, so we have that written up, the networks. The networks are as broad as they could get, so including everybody, community, medical parts, housing companies, etc. Is that the broadening of the networks you work with? Words, and, and this has been attributed to Martin Luther, and I couldn't find it in the movie. It's a big, big uh, sentence. Uh, when you look at the biography and uh, writings about him, it's not there, but I like it. It says, words are like children. The more attention we pay to them, the more demanding they become. So I think it's worthwhile, uh, first of all, to invite you. I'm going to declare this, an invitation to move into first person. Because yes. we tend to speak in third person, the public, society, our mm -hmm. patients, our organization, blah, blah. I think this is the time to start talking about ourselves. Me, I, us, we. We tend not to do that very often. Okay? So this is the invitation. So now, 
what do we mean by networks? That's a, an important question. And what do we mean by trust? And we don't spend enough time on that. So a network is basically uh, the result of two elements. Simple, simple. You have actors, when we are talking about human networks, people, and connections, relationships. It's all about relationships. Okay? Uh, and the relationships are usually verbs. Okay? So how do people relate? Through verbs, through actions. Okay. So now, when we are talking about networks, or human networks, and this has been studied, by the way, from nomadic tribes all the way to virtual networks now, Facebook and Twitter and these kind of things, and all over the world, are very uh, stable things. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, and it seems that each of us has at least one person in our lives that we trust. Most people have at least one person they trust. And this is called the most intimate circle. But then there is the next circle, which is the circle of best friends. And that circle usually includes five people. Mm -hmm. One and plus five. Pl one plus one <laughs> plus three. So we have five. We have five in that in that inner circle. Okay, and then from there it multiplies by three. And this sounds weird, but it seems to be pretty stable. So you have a group of fifteen, and then you have a group of fifty, forty-five to fifty. Then you have one hundred and fifty. Mm. And that is where it ends, really, for meaningful purposes. So we don't seem to have the capacity to have more than 150 friends, even though in the social networks we give the word friends, friends to thousands of people. 150 seems to be the group. Then from 150, the next is 500 people, and they are acquaintances, acquaintances, okay? And then if you multiply that, uh, by three is 1,500 people. Uh, these are people whose names you can recall. Okay? And then when you multiply that by three, you get 5,000 people. This is the number, on average, that we are able to recognize if we see their faces. We say, yes, I can recognize this person. So up to 5,000, you could call it uh, our personal network. But then we can extend it. Okay, because we are nodes or actors in our own network, and you are, and now, for example, here, we are bringing our networks together. We could reach together probably over 20,000 people. Okay? And if we look at us in this room, each of us has a network of 5,000, top 5,000 faces that could be recognized, 150 people who are close to us. Suddenly, we start realizing that just with the people who are present here and those who are connected with us, um, we could start including probably most of the Netherlands, a big chunk mm -hmm, of Europe, mm -hmm. and probably beyond, okay? So if we give ourselves permission, we could start believing, and this is a key word, that we could have a true global network that could include the whole of the species. And then some people are pushing the envelope and saying, these things are extended parts of our minds. And now with artificial intelligence agents and all that, we could extend our networks to non-human sites and also to living entities that we are part of a living planet that is called Gaia. And then if we push it, we should probably be able to go to the connection with our pets to begin with. And lots of people have connections with pets, which are stronger than with most humans. And it gets more and more interesting. Okay? And, and we need to pay attention to, to the verb, to the verb that determines the relationship. And, and for the purposes of today, to trust, I would like to propose okay, that we use as, as that verb. Okay? So think about that, 150 people, tops 5,000. And the key question is, who should be in your inner circle? Because we seem to be spending about 60% of our time with the 15 closest people. 60% of our time. So who should be there? And, and whether we should include in that inner circle people with whom we work and with exactly. whom we are that trying to change the world. And I'm going yeah. to stop yes. there. No, but that's hmm? interesting because now we have 
your description of how we should um, see the networks from your perspective, so it's more starting from a personal point of view. Then we have our main goal, like make the earth more healthier. And then we can use all these people on all these networks, but trust is needed. It's essential. It's we felt essential. It, we felt it change probably is impossible. Okay. And can you make the combination of your work in Bogota, how it started in combination with trust? Well, this group, and, and by the way, I, most of the credit goes to them, is called Compensar. It's, a, it's an organization, non-for-profit, that takes about 3% of the salaries of people who are employed, and then they, they have a pool, and they support 4.5 million people who are affiliated with 96,000 organizations in Bogota. We're talking about a very important kind of, of organization. And they consider themselves a, a well-being platform. They want <laughs> to provide well-being. And for them, health is a component of well-being, not the other way around. So they have a health insurer inside. And they uh, provide services to 1.3 million people. And they were in trouble a few years ago. They were going bankrupt. And they had to make a decision. And the decision was, we either do more of the same, we make little changes, or we do something different. And they decided, as some of you have heard me already, to do something very different. And they realized very quickly that to survive, they had to work together, even though some of them didn't even like each other very much or were very afraid of each other. Fear is a very important barrier for change as well and for working networks. And um, so they identified trust as the most important issue to address together. And then what do we mean by trust? This is crucial to. Uh, trust is a social emotion. And it's a social emotion that is produced or generated by belief. Belief in the ability and willingness of others to do something meaningful about a situation that has an uncertain outcome. And it, okay? So it's a social emotion. This is plural. Trust is a plural term. Okay? And, uh, and belief, belief is at the heart of it. In fact, the version in Spanish of this book doesn't have the word trust. It has confianza. Confianza in English, there is nothing close. I, I, I doubt that in, in, um, in Dutch, there is a word that gets very close because they share faith, the ability to see what is invisible. Okay? And uh, in, in Spanish, confidence, uh, confianza means to see with other people. This is beautiful. So Spanish has Latin and, and Germanic roots, sorry, English, has Germanic and, 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 and Latin roots. So we can say trust or we can say confidence, as we can say brotherly or fraterno, or as we can say annual or yearly. So the word confidence is probably more important around what we are discussing because it has to do with with, mm -hmm. with withness. We and how do you build it? Because we are also, uh, let's say, practical people. Mm -hmm. And now you opened up our hearts. <laughs> but how can we build trust? Some people said, or somebody said, there is nothing more practical than theory. Okay. We tend to dismiss it. Okay, so if we understand that this is plural, that this is personal, that this is important, then we need to, to decide how far we are willing to go. Okay? And, uh, and, and if you really want to engage, and, and most of the people here are engaged in meaningful change, this is dangerous. If it is not dangerous, it's not, it's not important, you see. So if you feel comfortable, you are not pushing it enough. So if we really, really, really pay attention to this, and Peter, we were talking about that earlier today, uh, we need to recognize, I'm going to be politically incorrect uh, on purpose, that the health sector is probably the most corrupt in the world. Okay, okay. we're uh, live on screen, the most corrupt in the yeah. world. Yeah, I'm not saying that we are corrupt, but the system, the system as a whole, 
uh, pretends to care about the needs of the population first and foremost. In reality, it doesn't. Okay? And, and as soon as you start scratching the surface and seeing that, it's very easy to, to pull back and say, I don't want to go there. So mm -hmm. this requires courage. Okay? Uh, courage and friends, I think. And friends. In your and inner circle to in your make inner the circle. change. And this needs to, we need to be, to, to join forces because alone is suicidal. So, but, oh my goodness. But your diagnosis is it's corrupt. You also experienced that in Bogota. And, and in Canada, and in the and US, in Canada, and, and, and in Spain, and probably in the Netherlands. And this may be impolite. You, you understand? But we are grown ups. And, uh, and, uh, and I think this is the time to have an adult conversation. Yeah. But is it really corrupt? Because the people who are in the system and making choices, choices and spending money or giving care to people are corrupt people? Or is the problem that we are fed up in systems and we are good people, but we can't fight the system? I'm not sure yet. Um, um, and again, this is first person singular, uh, plural. I'm glad that you're saying we, because it's all about, we, we are very good at pointing fingers. It's other people, other people, other people. I think we have reached the end of that line. Okay, Climate change, big problem now. COVID, what you were describing in terms of lack of trust. We cannot point the finger anymore. We need to say we are all part of what's happening and we are just as guilty as anybody else because it's very easy to blame others. So corruption, I like the, that word because this is my fantasy. I, I look at core like heart. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not corruption in the usual way we, t we take it, like I take money under the table and that kind of things, is a broken heart. You see, core, rupt, it has to do yeah. with rupture. Yeah, rupture, huh? yeah. So, but this is, is my fantasy. I don't think it has any foundation in etymology, but it's like we are living with broken hearts and we need to bring our hearts together again to be able, and I'm being very practical, by the way, because if we don't do that, eh, we just care about ourselves, I say, I'm going to do my work. The blame goes to somebody yes. else. I, I wash my hands, the take the boxes. And we are very good at ticking boxes, by the way, and playing that game. I think now we need to, we need to uh, back our words with action. Okay. And, uh, and it's possible. And that's what the group in Colombia showed. They took big risks. They decided to, to recognize their biases and their conflicts of interest and their fears and they put them on the table and they said, we need to do things differently or we will die. And, uh, and um, all the power to them. So I'm here very proud representing a group that showed that it's possible. The question is, can it be replicated? Yes. Or is it the exception? Can it be a pandemic as well? This can, way of thinking, working, and acting. Now and you, you have mentioned pandemic twice and, and, and it's very important now words. Words are like children, and words need to be demanding, like children should be demanding. Our children should be demanding more from us, because we are not good ancestors. Somebody said our main responsibility is to be good ancestors. We have been terrible ancestors. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, pandemic. Why does it need to be for something negative? Pan means all. Demos, people. So, and pandemos, beautiful. Latin word means something that is highly prevalent, something that happens very often. So why not a pandemic of health, a pandemic of love, a pandemic of generosity, a pandemic of humility, a pandemic of camaraderie, a mm -hmm. pandemic of complicity? We know that emotions, behaviors, ideas are contagious. Yeah. You but see, if I tell you a joke, everybody will be... Step. Ah, yeah, yeah, that's, that's called leadership. The, and everybody has... Is, experiencing fear because your ego or you don't have time or mm -hmm. you hate the other people you have to work with or you don't trust them. Okay, but let me, let me I, I will go there and thank you for giving me so, so much time and you asked me to shut up and I will do it. I'm very well <laughs> trained. Uh, <clears throat> but listen to this. Uh, ideas are contagious. We are speaking English now. We are wearing trousers, okay, the men and, 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 and skirts, some of the women, not togas. Because, because trousers and skirts uh, uh, became more contagious than, than togas. Mm -hmm. 
a hit song, a song that everybody in the world, Despacito, something like that, okay, then goes viral, we say, okay, it becomes contagious. Okay? Behaviors are contagious too. Ideas, emotions, and behaviors are contagious. So imagine contagious adaptability, ah, contagious trust. That's the kind of language we, that's part of the invitation, we could be endorsing rather than the language of transmissible diseases. And we are obsessed with disease. This is the time to engage in a counter pandemic. And ideally, we're talking about that, a positive one. Okay, because we are very good at focusing on the negative one. So what happens if we give ourselves permission to say, let's create a pandemic of health? And what does it mean? We need to encourage behaviors, ideas, and emotions that have to do with adaptability, if health is the ability to adapt. Okay, and what are those? You see, and then how can we use our circles of trust, our, our tribes, this should be an opportunity for us to get to know each other and see if you can be part of my tribe and, and vice versa and see how together we start infecting in positive ways our institution, our town, our country, our continent. Why not? Why not? If a virus can do it without a brain, <laughs> why couldn't we do it? We can it? do it hmm? by building tribes. Hmm? Thank you so far for this moment. Peter Benemir, um, you are, let's say, the leader of the tribe from the Bernhoven Hospital. Um, can you give a reflection on what Alex said, but also share with us your tricks and how trust was involved in your success? Well, I'm still progressing sort of all that information <laughs> because it's, it's a lot. But what it does with me, it's, um, I feel it burning. Mm -hmm. And I think that is one of the critical things, because if it burns in you, then you're ready to go for it and to, you know, to make sure you keep it burning. Um, so very inspiring to put it into words. Um, coming to your second question, um, I recall that uh, when we started to make this movement, uh, because I would like to call it a movement, uh, one of my doctors said, um, we have to deal with, I will say it in, in English and then translate it, congealed mistrust, gestold wantrouwen. And I had never heard before of that phrase, uh, but it made me thinking. And uh, what I realized is that um, as long as we had that uh, congealed uh, mistrust in the company, or in, in, in the hospital, we would not be able to make any movement. Um, so the first thing we, we did is was trying to break that down and to build that trust. And I think that was that one of the main reasons for success uh, in, in that movement to um, uh, appropriate care, because that was basically the strategy, uh, something which was sort of underpinned by everybody. Um, but to put the energy in there, and from a leadership point of view, that means um, that if you do something, or if you say something, let me put it that way, then you need to do it. So that people see that what you promise, uh, what you try to accomplish, that it's true, that it's, that it's pure, that it's authentic. And is it even more important for leaders in the position, because they have the mandate and they are the directors or they are the presidents or they are the head of the company? Well, it's, it, you are the person everybody look to. So uh, simply by that uh, uh, observation, yes, it is. Uh, but I think something I learned, learned recently, and, and I think that's a little bit also when you talk about the, the circle of influence, the first two, three person who are joining you, they are legitimizing what you are doing. They actually say, they show that what you are trying to accomplish, that they believe in it. And if those are the people who also have a status in the organization or in that movement, then you will find people uh, joining and then the movement is starting. So the fundamental of everything uh, we've done is basically simple word, trust. Trust. Alex also told that there is one really big thing you have to overcome and that's fear. Was there in your period of time fear inside your heart or... Yeah. In your yeah, mind or in your body? Yeah, for sure. Somebody learned me there are two basic uh, sort of drivers who make people move. That is love and fear. And 
Love for me doesn't mean, you know, we hug each other every morning. Could be, but it's not in that context. Uh, it is making sure that uh, people feel trusted, feel comfortable. They, they can do what they are sort of willing to do. Of course, in the, in the, in the uh, corridor you have agreed together. But fear, if that's there, then there is no space in your mind to do the good thing. Because you consistently feel there's somebody at, at the back of you trying to make your life difficult. And if that fear is personal, and it is always personal, but what about me? If you don't give that the attention, if you don't solve that, don't address it on an individual basis most of the time, of course in general, but also in, on an individual basis, because if you talk about what, what uh, Alex was saying, us and we and them, uh, so basically others, not yourself, then it's very easy to, um, yeah, to get agreement on what you're trying to accomplish. But if that is implemented, then it starts hitting yourself. And if you don't take that fear away, there is no space for trust, there's no space for love, and then it's basically holding down the whole progress. Before I go to uh, Dam, um, a question for you, uh, Peter. Did you uh, uh, experience the feeling of a tribe with the persons you worked with and also with the companies? Because you're telling um, it's, it's a movement, yeah. and Alex is more about there was an urgency in, in Bogota and we need to do it, um, and we made the tribe all together, especially also with the community. And your way of working was more with the institutions and the persons working in the healthcare. For sure, it it it, it was. I think I, I think it still is, but definitely there there was a vibe in the organization. There was energy. It was you know you can you can feel it when you walk through it, and it was not only in the organization and the people who are owning it, but also with our uh, the partners. If it was the insurance company or the uh, what is it, the, uh, uh, the Huisartse in, in English? The GPs. The GPs. Um, it was all over the place. Yes. It were people who believed in it, who feel this is our mission. And then you're unbeatable. I mean, it doesn't matter what comes on your way, you will be able to fix it. There's nothing which can stop you. Wow. I feel it as well. So we have two stories where the body is shaking <laughs> and the heart, so the, the level is really high for you, Dan. <laughs> Can you uh, add up um, some information from the Healthy Aging Network Northern <coughs> Netherlands and what your experience and also give us a little bit an insight in your way of leadership? Okay. Uh, well, I think the most important uh, well, lesson I would give to others is not to focus too much on the leaders when you want to change something. So to tell something a little bit about our foundation, we are a very small organization. We are, we are uh, financed by a couple of organizations such as the University Medical Center of Groningen, the University of Groningen, Hansa University of Applied Sciences, NL Stenden, and some companies and other organizations who think it's worthwhile to have an independent organization that can work towards a more healthy life for more people. And the uh, knowledge institutions find it important to uh, not only have knowledge, but also to make sure that knowledge reaches the people and reaches uh, society. So it's, a great, uh, uh, so it's a great role to be a very small boat between all those very giant ships who are all having their own course and are all part of that, that system where there are rules and people mm -hmm. have to apply those rules. Um, but when I ch want to change something, I don't start with the leadership. I, I'm looking for people who are like-minded. And that's also about, I think it's also about trust. In the end, you try to find people who say, uh, uh, you try to find people where you can, yourself can say, if, if uh, the shit hits the fan, will they still be there? Yeah. Or will they flee and say, you're on your own? Yes. You have already one, that's your best friend, and maybe you have yes, <laughs> four well, up, so, 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 so we are a <laughs> adds up to five. Yeah, so we're a small team, so there's me and there's, there's five colleagues at the moment who are my trusted people. And I, I trust them also because they are, uh, uh, well, not thinking the same way. It's not that we are a cult or something, but they have a, a feeling within themselves that they want to, have, uh, they want to uh, achieve change. And the great thing is that they can go within the region 
and find communities and other organizations that that are like-minded or mm -hmm. are, are are seeing the problem because mm -hmm. there's there's two types of fear i think uh, within the system one th one is uh, fear for change so uh, we we have all these so we have all this wealth mm -hmm. and all this wealth that we in have in the netherlands yes in the netherlands yes, yes. especially in <laughs> the netherlands and all this wealth made us able to make a system that we could outsource health. So there are people who grew up and who were always sure that there will always be someone to care for you, whatever happens. So if you're young, if you're old, there will always someone to be, there will always, always be someone that you can say, why didn't you care for me? So I think that the, the, what you said earlier, in the Netherlands, people don't ask who did something wrong. People are asking the question, who should have made sure that no one did something wrong? That's, that's, I think that's the main difference that we have over here. Part of our corruption. Uh, well, I think that's, and if you call it corruption, but also, also not willing to look uh, to trust. We trust mm -hmm. the system. Sometimes we trust the system more than that we trust the people. And um, uh, that, that's why we have a system where people... Uh, when you look at uh, uh, the Belastingdienst, uh, <laughs> tax, uh, the tax uh, service, uh, they did something very, uh, very wrong. But we don't have the ability as people within that system to, to find out what went wrong. I think that's the corruption in our system, that we, that we don't, aren't in control of certain elements of our, mm -hmm. of our system. So what, what we try to do is... The second, second fear? So well, the, oh, yeah, is, thank you very much. Because there's so much said that uh, I'm going all, the, all over the place. So the second fear is what will happen if we don't change? And what we are looking for is the people who are more afraid of the second fear than the first fear. And it's very hard when you are in the system, and I, and I are, are, am talking to a lot of people who are always thinking about how can we innovate, how can we change health, and then we are in this debate, and then people say, yes, let's start with the health insurance companies. And they already start with the system that's already there. And I'm looking for people who are willing to ask the question, but is it really logical that we do the things we are doing right now? Can't we also expect something from people themselves? Shouldn't we do also some management of expectations? So can we ask people themselves also to have a certain a way of thinking about their own health and how can we support them in doing that? Because now, when you look at corruption at the system, when a general practitioner helps someone to stay out of their practice and also in, in, invests in keeping people more healthy instead of making them uh, sick, yeah, uh, they get a financial. Uh, uh, they don't get financial support for it, they get punished for it because they have less money they get for it. So we tend to try to always ask these questions. Why are we doing things uh, the way we're doing? And it's more important sometimes to ask the question, why not, instead of why. Mm -hmm. So can we do it differently? Why not? Let's try. Let's see if it works. And that's why you need people you trust. And that's why you not, not only look for leadership, because leadership is always focused on keeping the whole, uh, keeping everything in place, making sure that there is no uh, risk for their own organization as well. But if you find the people who are influential on the management stage, but also have influence on how things go on the work floor, those people you need. And you invite them on your small boat. Right in the big tanker world. Right. Um, but there is sometimes, I think, also an experience in all three of you, maybe also you can uh, respond on that question, Machtelt, <coughs> where people took advantage of you and trust is gone. Mm -hmm. And how do you deal with that? I'll ignore them for the rest of my life. <laughs> no. But you need a no. tribe. Right, huh? yes, so yes, maybe yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah, but I think you should open up your heart and yes, but forgiveness I, is also very sure, important. Sure, sure, but but uh, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I think that's a, that's a, that's an important lesson you learn as well. Um, no, no, I think uh, uh, it's very important to understand why people are doing the things they are doing. So sometimes you understand that they take away uh, a certain 
ground beneath your feet because you know that's the way they work and, and they have superiors as well, uh, for instance, that, that, that they need to uh, uh, comply to. Um, but if you feel that they're not, not really trustworthy, then I try to Put them on the boat, yeah. okay. Okay. Put them out of the boat. Out of the boat, yes. And, yes. and no ticket for coming back. Sure, there's always, always, but but you, you, I, I tend to think it's very important to be, to really feel that you can work together. Mm -hmm. And if you mm -hmm. always have to second guess yourself and always have to ask the question, so that's what what we're doing e uh, on everyday life. We're always trying to understand someone and trying to how is, is this mm -hmm. person. You also said, is okay, really draw the line, yeah, draw sure. the line. Mm -hmm. uh, is that also the way you work, Alex, that it's more important? I, I just understand your words as it's more important that the tribe is full of people I can fully trust because then we're working out and we have the, the good uh, way of um, dealing with the bigger issues mm -hmm. than to join everybody and... Uh, be not that straight away with dealing with people. Well, if Alex, Alex. is correct, then those tribe, that the tribe that we trust and that gets to become a bigger tribe, they themselves will also have influence and find other people. So you will have a big, but the problem is when, uh, when you see a big, big problem and you have the feeling, oh, I have to do that all, it is all by myself, then it's better to make other people you trust yeah. Uh, responsible for it as well and then make it happen because at one point we said well we want to make the northern netherlands a more healthy place and then i was interviewed by a newspaper and they said well what's what's your master plan give me uh, in five yeah. years how and can we make goals. how can we make you accountable <laughs> for what you're saying right now and i said well no i'm 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 hoping that I find people who are willing to do this with me and I find uh, local organizations and, and, and communities that will move with me. But it will be, uh, 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 I, w I won't be sure if that will happen. Mm -hmm. and, but you and start that the movement and you start I with the whole idea of working I in a different way. I trust that I will succeed, yes. Alex. And thank you for these extra words that gave me time to think <laughs> about <laughs> how to deal with this. So that wonderful woman who is at the back is Marta. She has been <laughs> coping with me for 41 years. She cannot get rid of me. <laughs> she would agree with you. Off the boat. Off the boat. In <laughs> or out. Okay, so, so if I am in trouble, I go, and then she says, out of the boat. But I don't go that quickly to her. I, I believe still, even though I'm a cheerful pessimist, <laughs> that we can kill those people with kindness. Okay. Okay, if somebody hurts you and you respond with love, mm. okay, and if they try to do it again and you respond with love most of the time, most of the time, unless they're a psychopath, <laughs> those are the ones that need to be pushed off the boat. Okay, okay? Yeah. and that's, I agree with Martha, most people would, uh, would reconsider what they are doing. This requires... Um, acknowledging that all of us have a little psychopath inside, okay? I don't think, uh, and some people are studying the fact that we are multiple personas, and Walt Whitman said it, okay? I contain multitudes, okay? Mm. So I think we are all, we all have that risk of, of not caring, and this is what we are doing with the next generation, your daughter, I'm thinking about her, okay? Uh, that baby who is going to be coming in March, uh, or would have come in March if some people watch us after March of 2022. Uh, so what if we try to kill with kindness? And I'm going to go to the word love. Love, amor. What's the word in, in, in Dutch for love? Liefde. Oh, beautiful. In, 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 in Latin, amore, uh, um, uh, it, if you go deep, 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 it goes to amma, which is like amma, amma, mama, mama. Okay. It, it has to do with how a good mother behaves. And one of our daughters wrote a book on love, everything you need to know about love and all that, and she uh, enabled us to see that we, and we were talking about that, Peter, this morning, we need to learn to love ourselves first. And this is hard because we think that selfishness, 
But what does it mean to love ourselves? And, and, and how to deal with these people on the boat who are trying to open holes? Because that's what you're saying. Somebody just trying to open a hole on the bottom of the boat and you are there in the middle of a storm. You say, but please, okay, we want you to get the water out, not to get more water in. Um, love is an ability too. And it's the ability to derive pleasure, joy out of goodness. You said good. You used the word good. This one... And, and it manifests through four verbs. is to will good, to wish good. It's impossible to love without goodness. Okay? To do good, it's not enough to wish it. You have to do good. You need to be able to see good, even when it's very difficult, because everything is shitty. Okay? And the fourth one, probably the most important one, is to feel good, is to give yourself permission to feel goodness. So, so if we respond with that, and it's not easy because we all have a psychopathic criminal, you understand, a liar, a cheater, and all that inside of us, okay? And, and what we tend to show others is, is the, the result of a negotiation of what we would do and what others expect from us and all that. So, um, so we need to exercise compassion. Another word that begins with, with con. con. Ah. Yes. We make a list of the con and, words. And, and passion, passion. We tend to think that passion is, is something that drives you to do wonderful. No, passion is suffering, really, in Latin. Passion is suffering. So it's to be willing to feel the suffering of somebody else. Those people suffer, except if they are psychopaths. Psychopaths yeah. don't suffer, and, and those who are mostly... Psychopath, I agree with Martha, off the boat, okay? <laughs> and, uh, but they are rare. Most yeah, people really rare, are right? suffering, yeah. and they are manifesting their suffering through self-destructive behavior. And when I say self, it's not the individual, but it's the group destruction and all that. Many of the big CEOs of the world are psychopaths, okay? And, uh, and, and they will destroy the world if we let them. Um, so, so, um, so compassion, kindness, love first would be my approach. Okay. And then off the boat, if all the, and if possible, a bit of shame. But, yeah, a bit because of shame. when we have, ah, shame yes. is a very powerful thing. Social control, because, because you see, yes. this trust is a social thing. So we are constantly mm -hmm. watching for, you see, how people perceive us and all that. So if we are skillful, I'm being very practical now, we can create conditions within our environment con words, that would yes. be that would be um, uh, deterrence mm -hmm. for those who may want to to go beyond so again trying to go for the positive and to make the right choice the easy one killing with kindness another three or four con words the word confrontation is it in uh, an advice from you that we confront people when they dig up holes in our in a boats? congenial way you understand, because we tend to think that confrontation has to be an attack, a negative. In fact, we feel threatened. But if we open, and, and if it is done in the spirit of love, again, willing good, wishing, wishing good to begin with, then if somebody confronts me, which has to do with coming frontally, okay, that should be welcome, okay, because that should enable more possibilities to become visible. Because if everybody agrees with you, you are... In, in, in trouble, conflict, confrontation, all these, all these seemingly negative words could be very positive and constructive. And constructive. Another ah, word. there you so go. We pick up the whole line there with you con go. words. Yes, um, Peter. Uh, of course, you are uh, free to react and respond the way you wish. But I was um, inspired by all the CEOs of the world are... <laughs> Not all. Not all. I said most of the, <laughs> most of the CEOs of the biggest companies. Of the biggest the, company. Not an Not important, of beautiful local hospital. hospitals. Of course, you see. <laughs> but maybe you can give us a reflection on that because when it comes to leadership, I think there is a, a, a big yes in uh, what you bring in on the table, like the big CEOs of the big companies. Um, but leadership is very important. So how do you see yourself as leader of Bernhoff Hospital a few years ago? What kind of leader were you and how do you use trust? It's actually a question for, um, for the people in Bernhoff, I think. Yes, of course, of course. Um, <clears throat> I think I, um, 
what, what I was trying to do is um, help them making choices, mm -hmm. making sure that those choices were followed, uh, keep them honest, um, solving problems for them so that they could do what they are good in. Um, a, a popular phrase, servant leadership, but sometimes also um, a little bit uh, on what Dan's saying, hey, if people, they, they have a choice to join in or not. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's the, it's the goal of leadership to bring people in uh, from this concept of love. Uh, but if they are making the choice not to do, okay, then they're not in the boat. But it's, it's their choice. And I think that's important. And you must give them um, the right tools, input to make the choices. And everybody's free to make a choice. You don't have to be there. There are many places where you can do whatever you want. So if you feel more comfortable at another place, then go there. Mm -hmm. You cannot be destructive okay. in the route we have together accomplished. So, you know, it's, it's, it's challenging people, but also making sure that <laughs> decisions were taken. Because everybody wants to be involved in everything, but making decisions, taking responsibility, taking the consequences of decisions, only a few people are willing and capable of doing that. And, and um, I think that finding that balance, yeah, that's a challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, and how do you deal with that in a personal way? Because Dan was very open and told us, okay, when people are digging holes in my boat, um, I don't want to see them anymore. Now he's changed, eh? now he's dealing with them. Change, change, <laughs> he's going for love. Uh, but I think you have that experiences as well. So how do you, do you deal with that in a personal way? When people distrust you and make fun out of you or don't deal with you in a respectful way? I, I sincerely hope that there is no reason for people to distrust me. Uh, and if they do so, I'm confronting them. I, I'm asking, you know, well, what's the problem? What happens? If you, if you ha don't have that conversation, you cannot fix it. And of course, I will... I got another con. <laughs> Turning with each other. Yeah. No, but that's, that's your earlier point on words. I mean, that's the only way we can communicate to each other. There's also nonverbal communication. Eh? Communication. <laughs> another it's one. an M. Yes. Okay. But it's also right. a very nice word. No, no. Common con oh, in oh, Latin, oh, it's, go, it's it depends same. on the next letter, mm. whether you use M or N. Yes. Yeah, so it's the, communication the same. Is, communication. Yeah. With the heart. Community. Also, hmm? yeah. it's unity yeah. together. It's yeah. being together oh, okay. as one. <laughs> yeah, almost, almost, almost. <laughs> now, I, I, I'm trying to get back on the topic. <laughs> um, confusing. Confusing. Yeah. confusing. <laughs> I think at the end of the day, um, you should try not to take things personally. Mm -hmm. But I've got one weakness, which is when people start challenging my integrity. Yes. Um, I have difficulties yeah. to um, stay in control of myself mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. So if you want to know my weak spot, that's it. Yes. Yeah. But, um, but maybe it's not a weak spot because it comes in your heart. Yeah, and but the, the consequences of that could be yeah. sometimes out of control. Yeah. But yes. I'm you know, getting older, getting better in it. Mm -hmm. but, uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's the weak but spot. But it's maybe also that when you then maybe give a, a reaction which is a little bit too brutal or... Um, it's definitely sincere, the reaction. I think so. Maybe it's also nice for people because then they see that they, that there is a line. Yeah. And you draw the line. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Which may sometimes also uh, working together in a community uh, or in a tribe. But make things clear. Eh? Makes things clear. Yeah. So as long as it's uh, controllable. I have a question because uh, sometimes, uh, several times, the word leadership came, but we did not really go into that. And I'd like to—I know that Alex has specific ideas about what kind of leaders you know you you need. I would like to—you told about your leadership, but I would like to hear from also from Alex. Yeah, and Dan, Dan, you told some, but to really take some a little time for that. Yes, but can we ask also? The, the question to you. To me? If, <laughs> yes. But how, how <laughs> there is trust um, uh, in, in your professional life or in your private life, how important it is for building networks? This is part of your tribe here, mm -hmm. especially 
Alex and you, your brother and sister. By choice. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I grew up in a situation where I could not really trust very well, but I found that the first thing is what, what you said is that you really have to make friends with yourself and, 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 and see also the, all the negative parts of yourself. And, and if you can also live with that, accept it, and try to deal with it and still remain uh, yeah, in contact with your heart, then you, you can accept yourself, but you can easily easier accept it also from others. I've, I have great trust in life because I noticed that when somehow when people, I've been really treated badly several times in my life and afterwards I could, under, I could understand why the people did it, but I could also see that because I was kind of some blocked somewhere, I could find new ways. Mm -hmm. I came to health because I was really blocked in something I eagerly wanted, on organic food and health. They stopped at people who mm -hmm. were more powerful, so I could not continue. And then I went through this window and came to this concept of health and look what comes out. Mm -hmm. So it, I could see very, if that hadn't happened, I would never have gone on this path. So I have such a deep trust that even horrible, when horrible things happen, it might also bring something good. So all the time I think, okay, it, it, shit happens, and, and I always see, can I change it? If I can't change it, I say, okay, I accept it, but what small window I see where I can go through. I never give up faith, but you have to deal, it's, it's part of life that you're also meeting people and meeting things which really oppose you. But I have big trust that if you remain faithful to your, your dreams and your heart, you will get through. So that. Thanks, thanks for sharing. Leadership. Shit can be a fertilizer. That's what I can say <laughs> from what you, what you said. Yeah, you can consider it shit and disgusting or an opportunity for yeah. things to grow. Yeah. So thank you for that, sister. And uh, okay, so, so leadership. This is usually a word that is discussed most often in the business literature and management literature where you find it least. This is one of the paradoxes. Uh, the business world is full of administrators and managers who are there mostly to protect the status quo and a model that benefits the interest of their main, uh, usually shareholders. And I have nothing against that. It's, I think it's a fact. You are put in a position of so-called leadership, and I'm using quotation marks, to make sure shareholders <laughs> have maximum value and you don't deviate from the, because it's risky to, to, to try to come up with new ways of doing things. So, but that literature is like in medicine. Health is not the most important thing, you see. Or in education, learning is not the most important thing. It's, it's fascinating. In business, leadership is not the most important thing. Um, um, and I was going to cross a line, and I'm not going to do it. I was going to go for religion. I was going to go for the even bigger ones. Uh, but this is one of the paradoxes. So, but there are good messages there. And, and you talked about servant leadership. That's one model. Okay, you follow. And it's followership rather than... Okay? Um, you talked about what could be called seductive leadership. Um, what the group in Colombia used is a model called adaptive leadership which has to do with the concept of health as the ability to adapt. And that verb is very important. Okay? What does it mean to, to adapt? It's to change in response to a challenge. And not only that, that's not enough. Like with love, it's not enough to wish good. Okay? In this case, you change for the better. Then you have adapted. Okay? This is beautiful. So an adaptive leadership model or an adaptive leader should be a person who enables, I think that's a very important word, to enable, to make able, to enable um, change when you are challenged, okay, and as a result of that to, uh, uh, to facilitate the emergence of something better, okay? So, so and that's what they did over there. And I think we need more of that type of leadership. In a nutshell, and I mentioned it yesterday, uh, how to enable people to be the best versions of themselves mm -hmm. so that together with others, 
okay? Uh, the reaction to the change, and we talked about resilience the other day, uh, you can bounce forward. You understand it's bouncing forward because we used to take the word resilience as bouncing back to your original situation. So you are challenged and then you become better. You understand? And you are challenged and you become better. And whomever enables that is a leader. It doesn't need to be the CEO. We interviewed people with Martha in, in all, some organizations. One of them was a cleaner at the bottom of the hierarchy. And we interviewed the cleaner and we said, what do you do here? She said, I save lives. Mwah! A cleaner in a healthcare institution said, yeah, my job life. is to save lives. Yeah. And she was perceiving the cleaning of the floors as contributing to the reduction of infections. Yeah. Yes. Okay, and keeping the working environment healthy. This mm -hmm. woman was a leader mm -hmm. and is a leader. So it has very little to do with titles. Okay? Interesting. Um, there are a lot of people here and also in, in the Zoom. Hello there, we see you all. Uh, thank you very much. Nice to have some smiles back. Uh, who are busy with um, the transformation and busy with the movement and busy with the big change. And sometimes they feel lonely. So I think your first advice is make a group, a community with all the people here live in Ada, but also the people on screen. But how can we give them some advice or inspiration to be the best version of themselves in making the world more healthier or creating the health pandemic? Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you, you, you started with how. Um, I've spent most of my life uh, outside my native country as an adult which is fascinating. I spent five years in England, um, now 27 or so in Canada. And there was a big, big issue there. When I arrived and there was a challenge, the first reaction is a what or a how question. What do we need to do and how? Mm -hmm. In my native Colombia, your first question is who? Who, with whom? With whom? Or who do I know? Yeah. Who do I yeah, trust? Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Okay, to to That's deal with this challenge. And I think we should we remark this. We have all these conferences about how then, hashtag yeah, who yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We are maybe. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, there is value in the, the, hash, in the who. hashtag with whom. And if we are talking with whom or who. And, and, and it changes the picture because then you are not alone. You talked about loneliness, mm -hmm. big problem of our time. And especially for millennials mm -hmm. and for Generation C. We, we don't recognize the impact of loneliness yet as a, as a society. At a time when we could be connecting much more effectively. Okay? And uh, we are disconnected. So, so loneliness gets cured mm -hmm. uh, with a preposition. With. Again. With. Con, with. Con, 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 with, con, with, con. with. And um, so, so I would encourage who first, and then together, or with each other, which is not the same thing, let's figure out the what and the how. Okay. Hmm? So that's, that's interesting. That's, you can, of course, react, but I want to have it straight for myself because it's very inspiring. We always are busy with who dumb, hashtag how. Mm -hmm. And you're telling us it's about whom, with whom you want to work with, but also starting, that's my suggestion of your words, starting by building your tribe. Mm -hmm. And after that, make the big goal reasonable, instead of, okay, inviting people who want to deal with you in, in your, let's say, business-wise propositions. Yeah, again, you use the word tribe. What is a tribe? You see, it's a very interesting, and, 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 and there has been a lot of writing a, about this in sociology, in, in, in the humanities in general. I liked one uh, by Sebastian uh, Junger. He said, a tribe is that group of people with whom you would share the last of your food. <laughs> okay. Mm. okay. So we have to be very careful <laughs> as to whom who we choose to be part of that. We need to be very selective at a time when the word friendship has been devalued so much. Mm -hmm. So, ah, you're my friend. You just click here and get whatever. You're my friend. No, 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 no. This is serious because we are going to be spending 60% of our time with those people and we're going to go through the journey of life together. So we need to be very discerning 
as to not so much who we kick out, but who do we get on the boat in the first place. And there are some groups called affinity, affinity groups. And, and within that world, uh, which is another way of looking at, at human social style. networks yes. or tribes, they call them crews using the, the model of the boat. And they said, you are five to seven people uh, who you know would watch your back if you're in trouble. And P Peter, we were talking about that. I have a mentor who said, if you're not careful, you will end up as a typical so-called leader. He said, how do you recognize a leader? Is the person with the arrows on the back. <laughs> not on the front, on the back, if you're not careful. So, mm -hmm. so, so I would yes. say, who? Very careful with whom you invite into your space. And, uh, and, and then the what and the how would emerge and you would need to be changing because the circumstances in which we live are constantly changing. And one thing we have as humans that make us probably special still, every time we say this makes us specially human, an animal can do it, or increasingly a machine, okay? We seem to be able to adapt to change itself. Look at this, most animals or most plants are built to adapt to a certain very limited set of challenges. We humans seem to be as successful as we are because of our ability to adapt to change, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not to the specific change, but to change itself. So we have a lot of flexibility, and we need to give ourselves, again, permission to recognize that that flexibility would allow us to deal with almost any challenge that is presented to us if we do it together. Yes. And in combination with uh, resilience is bouncing forward. Mm -hmm. It's interesting mm -hmm. as well. Short reaction, short reaction, short reaction. And then think about um, uh, the people here, what you want to know, what you want to share. Maybe we can hand over a mm -hmm. mic so it's interesting as well for the people um, on screen. But a short reaction from you and from you, uh, Peter. Dan, starting with you. Well, I think it's good to ask the question who, but I would also, especially when it comes to the, the professionals of the future, etc., uh, also ask the question where. So sometimes we tend to have meetings like these where we are in a room with all like-minded people asking big questions about how can we, peep, uh, can we keep poor people healthy, mm -hmm. for instance. And we tend to do it especially everywhere except for where the people are not healthy and where the people are poor. So it's also important to go where the problem is actually happening and to see and also connect over there. Because, uh, and, and not, not start with, hello, I have a big program and I'm going to make yeah. you healthy. Uh, drop it yes, in so the let's go. because and two we years, found out it's good for you. Yes, and two years and then we leave again because <laughs> then the funding is over. No, uh, I, have, I have a colleague who spent a year and a half just, just in, a, in, a, uh, in, a, in a place where we didn't have really had a plan, but he made connections, he made an inner circle, people he trusted, who he sh actually shared food with. No, not his last food, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure. <laughs> but but then, you, then you understand also the local networks and how the local system functions and who you need also to, m to make that change um, yeah. happen. So I think where is also very important. Yeah. And maybe you're telling us also, don't make the distinction between professionals and communities and the people, but that's all one community. Yeah, I think, I think the interaction... In a professional way yeah, of thinking, sure. sometimes we see that there is a border, but yeah. we're just human beings, all of us. Peter. Yeah, I would like to start with a, a little sort of... Uh, <coughs> uh, I fully agree that the whom is important. The challenge you sometimes have is that you inherit sort of a group of people. If you come into an organization, then they are there, right? So the concepts we spoke before of are then very important to bring them to the chosen one, so to say. But there, there is a, a challenge for now and then. You, you cannot have always that free choice. Um, and, and, and I call it and leadership needs to address it. The second thing I would like to, um, to add is, um, you can change yourself, that's your responsibility. Others are having their own responsibility to adapt to the change you would like them to see or you invite them to do so. But the first thing you can do always, you have full control of, is changing yourself. Um, and I think if everybody would do that more often, not maintaining as he is or as she is, but you know, adapting to that concept, that would be nice. 
And the third thing I would like to add is we are brilliant in analyzing the problem. We are lousy, especially within the health sector, in getting into action. Um, so don't make it too complex. Try to sort of make it smaller, the problem you are facing, and then take them step by step instead of trying to solve everything at the same time. <laughs> to eat the elephant in, in pieces. In pieces, yeah. Small bites. In yeah. small bites. Um, and also, it's very important what you were saying, that you have to make a diagnosis of what's going on. So Yeah. It's like a farmer who is having a piece of land. Mm -hmm. If that land is great for potatoes, well, you cannot harvest uh, wheat, right? Maybe in a few years, but that's the change you need to make. And that is your responsibility to deal with the material you got, the talents you got, and over time you can change it. But yes. you, there is a starting point which is a given. Yes. Um, Martot, I'm going, we have a microphone, so we can ask the audience maybe to add up some reflections or ask questions. But do we, are we on track with what, because we have 20 minutes left, are there main topics left? No, no, I, I, I like, I'm very happy with what we were said until now. The only thing you said, why, what, how and who and and I just want to mention the why is also important because in Bogota, you, with this huge tribe, you had a vision. You had a common shared ID where you wanted to go. And I just want to mention that, that that is also Yeah, that's also added. important, yeah. 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 So yeah. far. Yeah, so far. Yes. Okay, introduction to all of you. Reaction, reflection, questions, remarks, something puzzling. Yes. <laughs> the, yes, yes, it's coming up. Yes. Well, um, you talked about the role of leadership in, in networks, and um, the, the people who are here today are in the role of a co coordinator of a network. Can you share some reflection of uh, the role and the necessity of this role for the success or the viability of a network? Oh, okay. A difficult situation to be in. As a coordinator, ah. Ah. as a coordinator, a <laughs> and, and, and let's look at the architecture of a network. Remember, a network is a group of nodes. When they are humans, they are people, and then links or relationships. A, a coordinator usually is not a dominant node, and yet a coordinator has a lot to do with the verbs that connect people. Okay. So it's a, it's a very, very tricky place to be. And, and, and I would say that often, often, and please, I want to see body language here because I'm trying to capture what I have felt through interactions with colleagues of, of, of years. Um, frustration is the enemy. Because you imagine possibilities. You can see them with your mind's eye, and yet reality is... Is, is, is showing you something else, and then the mechanisms that the system gives you are, are insufficient to, to steer things in the direction you would like. So you have a big responsibility with relatively little control, and a big vision, and clarity, and yet, you see, f feeling unable to, to realize it. So this is why complicity mm. becomes very important. A tribe of coordinators could be Tremendous, because most people don't see the coordinators. They see the CEO, they see the physicians, the nurses, and all that, and the coordinators. What are the coordinators? What are the and the fact that, I'm going to be careful with this word, the role is underestimated. Mm -hmm. We need coordinators just to show on the chart coordinators. They are the connectors. Ah, okay. The beauty of this is that, is that coordinators could create almost like a hidden curriculum, as, as we talk in, in academic mm. institutions. People who are subverting wow. the system. When it in comes an, to corruption and organized exactly, crime, they exactly, are Exactly, exactly. This requires <laughs> complicity, almost like a network of coordinators feeding the shoots that the system sees from what could be considered a rhizome, a rhizome. This is a concept from botany that Deleuze, a philosopher, with Guattari brought. It's, it's not a tree with a clear trunk and the, and the, and the roots, but what grass has underneath. Mm -hmm. 
or the fungi, the or fungi. the fungi, ah, the the rhizome and the mycorrhiza, which is what the fungi have, with no hierarchy, with it's it's almost impossible to destroy because even if you the internet works like that. So imagine a rhizome of coordinators building things out of sight. So make the fact that you don't feel as visible as you think you should be an asset and, and a source of power. Because if the system doesn't, doesn't notice the, the power that is inherent at that level, it would give more room for things to brew, you see. So it would be too late by the time those who don't want change to notice. By the time they realize it, the whole thing is an infection. Mm -hmm. The constructive <laughs> infection could, could take place in the much Easier. So we have new virus material mm -hmm. here. Yes. Yum, yum, yum. Yum, yum, yum. So uh, I think it's also important to uh, ask yourself the question, what is it that I'm coordinating and uh, what problem are we actually solving with each other? And it, does everyone agree that we are solving this prob problem? And is there some intrinsic uh, motivation, motivation. To, to, to solve it? Because you also have some networks that have decided, well, we have a big uh, signing moment and we decided now we're a network and we have a coordinator. Good luck. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then mm -hmm. people start to work and then ask the question, well, but, but yeah, but it's just, I don't have the hours to do this or uh, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So but bring it back to your position yeah. as director of the oldest network of the oldest, yes. Huh? The oldest network. Um, <coughs> what is your goal? Because you, you were telling uh, the story about uh, the journalists came in, okay, now yeah. you're going to make uh, everybody uh, healthy in the Northern Netherlands within yeah. three years. What is your goal for a healthy aging Nord network Northern Netherlands? Well, in the end, the goal is to make people uh, have more healthy lives, mm -hmm. so more healthy years, instead of making them as old as possible. We would just want to make sure that uh, the healthy mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. uh, there are more healthy years. And what we're actually trying to do is also make accidental health is just as fine as people making yes. the very conscious decision to be healthy. So if we can take away some elements that lead to unhealthy behavior, for, in for in uh, instance, that's great. But what we also try to do is make the group that finds themselves responsible for health bigger outside of healthcare instead of inside of healthcare. So make, make a bigger coalition outside in the world that are actually trying to keep people healthy and make an environment that make, makes that happen instead of throwing it all to the healthcare professionals who have other stuff to do, uh, to do as well. Yeah. Thank you. May I say so? Because of course I you will may connect. say. You don't I have to ask. Eh? I will connect. Oh. <laughs> Just jump in. Daughters and a tough wife, I have to ask always. And uh, <laughs> by the way, parenthesis, I'm my worst enemy. And one, one tip uh, that may be useful to you uh, is to create your own board of directors to protect you from yourself. I'm my worst enemy. So I appointed Martha is the chair of the board of directors. And she would tell me what I have to hear, not what I want to hear. Mm -hmm. Talking in terms of, 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 of changing, very difficult to change ourselves alone. We need, we need support. So you mentioned fungi. You mentioned mm -hmm. uh, uh, expanding. The, this is why I want to jump. Uh, fungi have been shown some kinds of, of, of mushrooms. Of mushrooms are really the fruit of the fungi. But fungi can be thrown into very toxic stuff. Yes. And they get rid of the, the toxins in, in beautiful ways, uh, oil spills and these kinds yes. of things. So philosophers have come up with a third approach to dealing with problems. You talked about problem solving. Yes, and most of us are problem solvers. Show me what's the problem, I will solve it. Fixers. Yes, uh, or we can resolve, mm -hmm. we can find a solution, or we can try to resolve a problem when there is no solution, okay? There is a third one, which is to dissolve the problem. What you describe by expanding beyond mm -hmm. the healthcare system is a way of recontextualizing mm -hmm. what otherwise would be a problem, and it ceases to be a problem. Michael, what you led us to think and to notice that health is about adaptability allowed us to dissolve disease as the main problem, you see. So this problem, yeah. this solution is something roots. that deserves yes. Yeah. that deserves more attention. So what if we make it stop being a problem? That's the best, you see, way. So health yeah. has the ability yeah. to adapt rather than the yes. absence of disease. Yeah. Just, yeah. we can imagine a world without disease. Or also hmm? for organizations, that organizations work from the idea that they should be um, 
not necessary at all. Sure. Okay. Exactly. That's and now we can't even imagine a world without disease because when we, we have what is health, okay? Thank you, Magdal, for leading us. But what is disease? We haven't spent enough time. And we, when we spend time thinking about the meaning of disease, it's what physicians have decided it to be. And we invent them. Mm -hmm. So we can get rid of them. And we can focus on other things, not to... Cancer was from the Greeks, the ancient Greeks. It looked like a crab. Okay, it was called cancer. Now, the more we study cancer, we realize that it's probably hundreds of different conditions and that the word cancer means very little. It's like infection. Okay, so now we, we have the opportunity to challenge even cherished concepts and dissolve the issue and expand and go into other areas. And the coordinators of the system could play a tremendous role okay, in terms of undermining the foundations of the system so it can bounce forward. Hmm? Interesting. You see body language. Peter. I would like to add two things to that. I think for, for coordinators, connectors, whatever you want to call it, it's very important that you ask yourself, is, am I the person who can fulfill that role? Mm -hmm. And the second thing is that the person who decide that this role needs to be implemented, that, that person, that you challenge the person if he or she understands what that role means. Because I think one of the problems you see in organizations is it's got a name, a title, yeah. but it's not fitting the objective or the goal or the, the mission you are accomplished with. And if you put something in place which is not what it meant to be, mm -hmm. or if you're a person who's got a completely different profile to fulfill that role, it will not work. It's not nice for yourself. It's not nice for the organization. Mm -hmm. and, and there are so many mistakes made in that area. So if I can be a, sort of give you a little bit of a practical thing, mm -hmm. then take this with you home. We have a question from Caroline. She is online. Caroline. There we are. <laughs> what are the suggestions of the speakers to help changing the mindset of the people to become healthier themselves, specifically in a difficult time now of COVID pandemic, stressful world, more than 50% obesity and mental problems? So, huh? small question. Uh, thank you, uh, Caroline, very small question. But uh, I think the question is more that you want to ask the people here, how people can live more healthier, become more healthier. Alex? Yeah, and the mindset. And the change mindset. the mindset. That's okay, the thing. Okay. Uh, obesity. Okay. If you look at the Rubens painting, they were voluptuous mm -hmm. people. That was regarded as healthy before. And then somehow, somehow, it became a disease, and, and the American Medical Association decided to have a special meeting to decide, to decide whether to consider obesity a disease or not a few years ago. When we look at the evidence on obesity, except for the morbidly, morbidly Morbida, obese, yeah, morbid obese, which is obvious, okay, when you see somebody who is having even problems to breathe because of, of body mass, people who are regarded as overweight or obese tend to be healthier when you look at it uh, from the prevalence of other conditions. So there is a point beyond which the risk of diabetes or cancer increases. That is probably the only, apart from that, I would say that most people who are regarded as uh, overweight or mildly obese are healthier, even if we look at it through the lens of, of, uh, uh, of, of the medical system. So we need to be very careful because we have become obsessed with body shape, 94% of, 96% of women, this is being used as a tool of oppression, yes. mostly for women, 96% yeah. of women are dissatisfied with their body shape mm. and their body weight. The and implications of that for your mental health is uh, Tremendous. Enormous. So we are focusing, we declared it, okay, a, the a, AMA decided mm -hmm. to call it a, a, a disease, and we are very good at that. We take symptoms or signs like hypertension, high blood pressure, and then we codify it, and then we turn them into diseases. High blood pressure is not a disease, it's a sign. You see, it's a sign, and we made it. Cholesterol or lipids, they are signs, they're numbers, and then we codify them, we turn them into diseases. On the mental front, anxiety, 
Okay, we are worried about the unknown and all that. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we are not careful, a group of people like me get together and we say three or four criteria of this will now turn it into a disorder. Okay, and we call them anxiety disorders. They get codified, they become part of the system. So th there is an opportunity now to stop and, and, and say, should this be regarded? And I would begin to answer that question by saying, isn't this the best time to look at health as an ability to adapt and then to contrast, contrast each of these terms and see if, as a society, they mm -hmm. would contribute, you see, yeah. to our changes for the better. And it's also the metaphor Peter was using about making the diagnosis. So some things are signs, signals, mm -hmm. and we have to diagnose back to find the, the best solution. And when it comes to the last four minutes of this webinar. I'm sorry, the dialogue just happened. The, when, you, when I hear the word mindset, so I, I, I yes. hardly ever come across someone who has an unhealthy mindset, who has a, like an, uh, who really thinks, now I'm going to be unhealthy and I'm going to make all the choices <laughs> to keep myself unhealth, as unhealthy as po possible. So, uh, uh, but I also think that uh, that language alone won't help us uh, with with some certain problems we also yes. uh, also have. What we see is when you get people involved in so so what you see is sometimes people get in a negative spiral mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they get isolated from society yes. and then all things become difficult yeah. and, and so so the main th main uh, um, uh, idea would be for me to involve people actively and try to find some way w so move moving together so exercising together is a very if you organize it well with the right people as well so you can make it make it a, a routine and then after a couple of months people start to talk about all the other problems they are having as well and it's always about finance it's always mm -hmm. about un yes. uh, uh, sick family uh, members yeah. it's always about housing that's not in order etc yeah. so don't not only focus on the the unhealthy mindset of people but also focus on why do people the things they are doing and mm -hmm. why ha have we created also an environment to promote that because the first thing you get asked when you buy a cup of coffee at the station, they say, do you want a co cookie with that? Cookie, yes. Or do you want sugar? <laughs> right. Um, I'm sorry for my... Karen. Mm -hmm. Karen. I think it's Karen van Ruiten. Yes, she's smiling at, uh, and she's ah. nodding her head. So the last question is from Karen. Uh, and she is the director of All is Health. Is the who more a feeling question, intuition, based on love or connection with trust and energy? And is the what how more based on knowledge or fear of not knowing <laughs> it's up here it's a, it's a for two minutes it's a very uh, <laughs> yeah, nice I mean, interesting this is, question this you is see? a wonderful way to, yes, to, to put close it. the webinar and what i would say karen what a beautiful opportunity this week creates to open space to have conversation about these terms and to start turning them into transmissible you see entities as part of this hopefully pandemic, counter pandemic. We need a counter pandemic of positive things. I mean, we are getting terrible news about climate change and, 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 and COP26 big disappointment. We need more than ever, okay? The capacity that we have as humans to imagine a better reality and to make it happen. So thank you for the question. I would say, brava, <laughs> let's continue brava. the conversation. The question hmm? is the answer, that's great. Yeah. 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 The question is the answer. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, can we have a big hand of applause for the initiators? Yeah. Machtel Huber, <laughs> and for our speakers, Peter Benemir, Dan Bultje, and our head guest, mm -hmm. Alex Chabat. Thank you so much for watching. It's uh, also a possibility when you are very inspired to ask the link and we can share it so a lot of people are also into this new school of health transformation, the school of love and the school of trust. Thank you so much.